Lipstick fruiting, please. Is it too piece. bright? You sure it won't need a torch to show you to your seat? Trying to connect, connect you? you. Only teasing, it's smashing. Sylvia, the brother's got plastic to the invisible man. Number, please. What are you doing at the weekend? I'm sorry. Yeah. Depends on Rick. It's his big interview for the university on Monday. You might want to be starting up for it. Number, please. Your line is engaged, Baslo. Baslo? What do they want? Looking at me to try harder. I'm sorry, would you like me to try the call later? Can I be of assistance, sir? Our pleasure. I beg your pardon, sir. Trying to connect you. Oh, pound of plums in that mouth. <laughs> we have to watch your P's and Q's when we get to Baslow 212 en route to London. I'll stay. Anyone want anything from the canteen? No, 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 no. Are the royals down to chats with the game then? Oh, Buckingham <laughs> Palace and Balmoral are so boring. Do let's have a change. A weekend in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded more like a member of Her Majesty's government to me. <laughs> Won't you connect them? The scrambler comes on, and you can't tell if it's the Duchess, the Prime Minister, or the arse maid. All you hear is this dreadful din, like dustbin lids rolling down a hill in a thunderstorm, accompanied by a tune de Farlinis <laughs> with a broken arm. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to check the line, log the call. Not our fault if they forget to put the scrambler on if it breaks down. Yeah. Oh, but even then, we're not supposed to eavesdrop. Would we dare? The temerity of it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Sylvia and Rick joining us on Saturday with our perspectives? You're right, wouldn't it, man? No, oh, Dick's a perspective, Nisey. The theme is going to be after Saturday. Why invite me to the dinner with the bosses and wives and everyone else there? Dick's a bit of a Georgie Porgy, you know, Chris. He's still engaged to that girl in Nottingham, isn't he? He's going to break it off as soon as he gets a chance. Be cruel to do it in person, by phone or letter. Cruel whichever way it happens, Chris. Sooner the better, though. Oh, that's the worst thing. Everybody except the girl herself know when it's over. You soon will know. What about it, Sylvia? I'd love Dick to meet you and Rick properly. You know what those Rose people are like. It'll be easier for me sitting with me own little crowd. Say you will. Well, Rick's got his interview for Oxford on Monday. Talking about Saturday night. If you take his mind off it. It's a native Tibetan refugees, he's bound to a brew. I'll tell Dick it's a table for six, all right. I suppose so. Come on, girls. Armitage is about to send out a search party. Chop, chop. Look at me, sad. Dick, it's a possible table for six now. Yes, Baslow, number three. Madam Ray, Sylvia and Rick. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Three the Home ways. Office, right away, sir. Mm, yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Darby, trying to connect you. Up to there. The word is a motley crew of some 5,000 or so anti nuclear nuisances marching through Derby. It can't go on, Harry, disrupting traffic and so on. So here's the drill. I want your boys to pick out the banner wavers, hold them for a couple of days. See how they like their life being disrupted for a change. What's the matter, Susie? Jerry, Richard. Rest of scrambler's off. Have you finished looking? Is it along? Shut the word, our scrambler's broken down again. Yes, I I've spoken to the Prime Minister. Two files, and I want them on my desk as a matter of urgency. A, armaments to Iraq, quantity and capacity in earliest date of dispatch, and B, the Cyprus business Makarios is ready to sign. Oh, and uh, keep it under wraps. We'll have the bloodhounds from the press at our throats, and our entire efforts will be up in smoke. Uh, oh, and uh, Thursday's meeting with the... Kitchen. 
Take your positions at once. You are employees of the civil service. Responsible and respected members of society. Privileged custodians of the realm. And as such, must always be prepared to match the high standards of integrity expected of you. No matter what your personal politics may be. Whatever you hear during the course of your work in this building is sacrosanct. If any of you ever reveal a single syllable of what you have heard, not just today, but in any conversation you happen on in the course of your duties here, I shall do my utmost to ensure that the strongest penalties are exercised. You will be sent to prison. Is that understood? Yes, yes Mrs. Mary. We really must persuade the engineers that fixing the scrambler is slightly more important than their team in this armitage. This is the third breakdown this month. I believe they're working on it. Well, they'd better work a bit faster. In the meantime, we'll have to watch those girls. Some of them are not quite up to the desired calibre. Oh, I think the girls are well aware of the consequences of any serious infringement of the rules. They should be aware, Miss Armitage, that every infringement is serious. Are you people actually aware that the scrambler at Chatsworth is off once again? And if not, why not? Could they really send us to prison? Technically, yes. Yeah, it's in the rule book. We're civil servants. We've signed the Official Secrets Act. Nobody takes any notice of that. All the newspapers have GPO contacts and nothing's ever done about it. How do you think the Princess Margaret romance story broke? A GPO girl listened in and accidentally connected the line to a gentleman with a question in. Who told you that? Your brother? Well, I don't think the Blamonde was joking. I intend to forget all about that conversation regarding... What was it? Legs to a runner, was it feet? Didn't it properly, Your Honour? <laughs> Come on. It was just the usual etiquette and procedures. They bought me a coffee, that's nice. About Saturday, Rick. I expect you'll need to read up for your interview. I'm in, Sylvia. Definitely in on my marks. All I've got to do is turn up at the right time, make the right noises. Pure formality, more or less. We could go for a hike if you like, take some sandwiches. To you. Open it, Rick. We've been invited to the Rolls Royce dinner dance. Chris especially wants us to be there. I'd rather empty sewage. No, you wouldn't. You always exaggerate. Come on, Sylvia. Can you see me in a dinner and dance? It's preposterous. I mean, I hate those types. What types? I'm going, Chris is going, Val's going, and she's a union rep. We'll all be sitting together. And there's Dick. If we're not good enough for you now that you're going away to university, I can ask someone else. I don't mind. Dick, who the hell is he? He's Chris's friend. And what does he do, this friend? Oh, he's some kind of engineer at Rolls. Working class? He works there, so yes, I expect he is. Hundreds of workers at Rolls. Perhaps one or two of them might be interested in young guard, you never know. And when is it this dance? Saturday. You want a bit shift as well, Sylvia? No, I've got to go back in a minute. Hello, Rick. Congratulations about your interview. Thanks. Next, I'll be inviting you down to Chatsworth to dine with the Prime Minister. Two thousand. I've got them on my desk as a matter of urgency. You don't want to take it all that seriously. Nobody else does. See you, Susie. After our last demonstration, I sent her brother an article on Fidel Castro, and he had the cheek to return it with the comment of no local interest. The political editor of the Derby Express, can you credit it? Mm. So, 
I can tell Chris you'll come then. To the dinner dance. Even a local rag, you'd think Derby was centre of the universe. Rick! I need to know about the dance. Well, as long as you don't expect me to foxtrot, you can't dance properly. <laughs> Anyone can dance. I'll teach you. Come round tonight. He's coming! You clever fish. Rick's the one who's clever. Brainy, anyway. Not the same thing, is it, Brutti? Some people have brains without an ounce of common sense. What do you mean? Thinking with such gorms, babies. Can't decide where they really want to be. Sit in the pram waiting to be pushed. Look. Real satin head. Why's it expensive? It's for me big night, Brutti. What's a week's pay? It's definite to a table for six. I said we'll all meet up at the bar first. Let me close down and take your break at the earliest opportunity. You too, Miss Cross. I gather there's a Rolls Royce due on Saturday. Yes, I believe there is. Well, if you have any further arrangements to make concerning the event, would you kindly set an example and make them in your own time? That applies to you too, Miss Ferrari. It would apply if I'd been going. I did invite you on and you said... I don't sit to dinner with wolves, Chris. For goodness sake. Put a cork in it. There was a message for you while you were out, Miss Sands. A rather breathless young man by the name of Hollister. Rick Hollister. The dance is off. Going on a march. We'll so here's the drill. I want your boys to pick out the banner wavers, hold them for a couple of days. See how they like their life being disrupted for a change. Paid for his banner? Does that make sense to you? Yes. Thank you. It would be of assistance to us all, Miss Sands, if you requested your acquaintances to desist from making frivolous calls when you are on duty. We are far too busy to be passing unintelligible messages from all and sundry. I don't know. Hmm. That's Ronnie. She's got a good nose. Only she's so critical about it, it gets me down. Perhaps I'll use them all. Do you know what Dick said when I told him you were coming? He was thrilled. Said he'd been planning it for days. Wants me to meet all his friends. He's very well thought of at Ronald's. I've asked him to go on their management course. What's wrong, Sylvia? Rick's not coming to the dance now. Why not? He's going on a march. Oh, fruity. Well, when is it, this march? It's Sunday, but... Well, it's no problem. He can do both. But... But he'll have to get up early. You can borrow me a alarm clock, then. Now, come on. Help me choose. Which one? on the march, you might get arrested. Arrested? It's an anti-nuclear march. Rick is one of the banner wavers. I can't arrest you for marching. This isn't Russia. Where'd you get all this from? I couldn't help overhearing. The man said, I want you to arrest all the banner wavers, hold them for a couple of days. It was the Baslow line. He was definitely talking about the Derby march. Oh, you are a dot. You'll get yourself a sack repeating information of that nature. I suppose I could warn him. In a roundabout way. Do you like porridge? Because that's all you can look forward to if you do anything stupid like that. But supposing Ricky's arrested? He'll miss his interview. He won't be arrested if he's not there. But... Work on him. Persuade him to go to the dance. And then make certain he's in no condition to stand up, let alone do the march on the Sunday. But how? Use your womanly imagination, Sylvia. <laughs> Why do they fall in love? 
what are you trying to do? Could you wait to quick step? Well, that's the wrong music, surely. You want a Victor Sylvester. Well, we haven't got Victor Sylvester. Well, keep it down, please. I can't count Miss Titchers. What's the matter? I think I'll go home now. No. I mean, you don't have to go yet. I'd better get started on my banner. No H-bombs for Britain. Or maybe disarm or perish. Why can't you miss one march? You're so selfish. I'm selfish? That's rich. You've changed since you started that stupid job of yours. Do you know that? My job is not stupid, if you don't mind. You've lost all your ideals, dances and dinners, and quick steps, and Chris this and Chris that. The world's going bad and you don't seem to care. You're becoming a petty bourgeoisie and that's the sad truth. And you're becoming a snob. Chris may not be brain of Britain, but she's warm-hearted and does care about her friends and makes the best of things. I'm surprised she's still talking to her own dad seeing as he's only a rare woman. All right, Sylvia. All right. I'll go to the dance if you really want me to. Only I'll have to leave early. Well, that'll be all right. And only if you come with me on the march. Rick, I can't. Fair's fair, Sylvia. And we might even persuade some of your friends to march with us. Sweet and innocent. I prefer them like you. Sweet and sinful. Dick. You've got the best body in Derby, Christine Cross. Outside of Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, that is. <laughs> best built. Best powered. Best upholstered. Stop it. I don't mean it, Chris. You're a class A prototype woman. I'm potty about you. Seriously. I bet you say that to all the girls. No. What have they been saying about me? You're engaged, Dick. To another girl. Only technically. I'm not sharing you. I'll break it off, I promise. By Saturday. you are doing at once. Special exclusive report by Dave Simmons. It is understood from a source close to Mr. Macmillan, the Prime Minister, that Britain will meet Iraqi requirements for arms under a new post-revolution bilateral agreement. The news broke while the Prime Minister was staying in Derbyshire. Miss Simmons, step forward. In pursuance of the regulations regarding the confidentiality of information obtained during the course of duty on GPO premises and by the use of GPO equipment, Miss Susan Simmons is from today suspended until further notice pending an inquiry. Not only has the good name of this exchange been tainted by speculation, but a general security investigation may now ensue. And all because one silly girl could not keep her mouth shut. Miss Pepper, may I ask you to escort Miss Simmons out of the building? Ensuring that she leaves her headset, pencils, notebooks, keys, and any other GPO property behind. It's such a rotten shame. 
And Mum's putting her on a train to stay with relatives. Recover from the upset. She's only a kid. Her brother ought to be shot. Yeah, she won't get another job in the service. Or anywhere else if they decide to make an example of her. They won't do that, surely. Susie Sox Simmons, she's not exactly public enemy number one. Mm, you don't know her. Put yourself on the wrong side of the establishment and they can get very, very nasty. To university, are you? I hope so, yeah. The interview for it is on Monday. I wish you luck. I'm a grammar school man myself, with a sandwich course at the Polytechnic. It's good enough for rules, but then they're looking for practical types. What is it you intend to do afterwards? Don't know. Something that matters. Pharmaceuticals, motor industry, that sort of thing. No. women up to, eh? Did you square up with your mum? Eventually. It was a bit of a job. I told her I might stay with you overnight if we were late. But I knew it won't work. For heaven's sake, Fruity. Rick's always like Cinderella. Has to be home before midnight. Won't matter what I do. A small bottle of brandy will tuck into Ember just nicely. You can buy it upstairs. Rick doesn't drink. He will tonight. Dick's ordered us six bottles of wine to go with our dinner. Come on. to lift. Oh, no thanks, we're walking. Uh, Come on, Rick. It's miles. I've got to get off early. Oh, we'll take a shortcut through the park. The air will do us good. Good night. Good night. And remember, Chickadoo, you're not 18 yet, so hands behind your back and three feet apart. Never mind. Good luck. And to you. Why do birds sing so gay? Lovers await the break of day. Why do they 
I like cheese and tomato. Because trouble with tomato in sandwiches is that they squash. What are you having in your sandwiches, Sylvia? In my sandwiches? I'm not sure I'm having sandwiches. You can't march on an empty stomach. We should, get, we should go home now, get our stuff ready, prepare for the march. And the banner. Oh, Sylvia, the banner. I left it at my Aunt Sheila's. I'll have to go home first, make my sandwiches, buy around to my Aunt Sheila's, then pick you up outside your gate. Before 7.30. We're going to miss the march. How terrible. Help! We'll start shouting. Hello, girls, in two weeks' time. We're going straight right after the break here on UK Gold, so stick around.